This is the first 3.2b video. We're going to figure out a way, you're going to learn a way how to determine if a linear model is appropriate. So if you remember from the last class, we talked about the data from the EPL season from 2019-2020. We had the goals scored by each team and the number of points that they accrued throughout the season. So if we're predicting their total points based off of the number of goals they scored, then we can calculate the regression equation as you see here. So to determine if the linear model is appropriate, the first thing we should always do is just look at the graph. And you can see the scatter plots. Now I've already got the line and the residuals on here, but you can see that the scatter plot appears to be linear and um, it appears to be in a positive trend. Uh, but I want to show you another step, what's called a residual plot, to really take a better look. And it's going to be your key for determining if a linear model is appropriate. It's pretty simple to do. The residual plot is just a scatter plot of the residuals against the explanatory variable. So we're going to find the residual. For example, let's remember how to find the residual. So we'll look at Liverpool here. And we're going to find the residual for Liverpool's score their points based on their goals for. So you can see the residual for Liverpool was 18.76. We plugged in how many goals they scored and predicted that they would score 80 points in the season. But since they scored 99 points, they scored 18.76 more points than we expected. So what I've done is I've put the residuals for each, uh, for each team in the data table. And to make the residual plot, we're gonna have to plot all of these with their number of goals scored. So I'm gonna show you how to do this in your calculator. So I'll open that up and put the goals for in list one, and I'm gonna put the points scored in list two. Okay, so I've entered the number of goals they scored in list one, and the response variable number of points total in list two. So what I want to show you now is how to automatically calculate the residual for each observation in list three. The first thing you have to do is calculate the line of regression. So we'll do stat calculate line reg x plus b. So it's going to give me my slope of 0.836 and y-intercept of 9.182, which we saw earlier, and a pretty strong correlation. And now we'll go back to our list. And if I scroll over and up and make sure L3 is highlighted, then I can hit second stat number seven says resid. Hit enter again, and it will automatically put all of the residuals in list three. Now it's important that you know you have to calculate the line of regression before you do this um, in list three for the residuals because it needs to use the formula, has to store it in there. So now all I have to do to make the residual plot is use list three as my y values and list one as my x values. So I'll go to my stat plot, second y equals, turn it on. The first option is the scatter plot. If I hit zoom nine now, it's going to show me list one and list two. That's going to be the regular, the original scatter plot. So let's take a look at that first. Zoom nine. There's my original scatter plot. Looks strong, positive, and linear. Go back to your stat plot to change it and take a look at change list two to list three because that's where my residuals are. And now I can see my residual plot. It looks kind of funky because the residual plot shows the errors. So you can see here, this was Liverpool. It has a positive residual. And if you find the average of all the residuals, it's always going to be zero. So I've copied this graph onto the notes and I'll open up the notes and talk about it there. Okay, so down here you can see that I have the residual plot that was on the graphing calculator. And the key for the residual plot is we want there to be no leftover pattern. We want, we want the residuals to be randomly scattered, uh, not revealing any hidden pattern in the data. And that's, to me, what it looks like in this data that we have here. I don't see any curves. I don't see it starting small and getting larger. It looks 
relatively evenly scattered throughout. And so what that means is this linear model relating points to goals four is appropriate for this data. So here I've explained why this linear model is appropriate. I gave two reasons. The scatter plot, the original scatter plot looks linear and there is no obvious pattern left over in the residual plot. So again, the residual plot is just to determine if a linear model is appropriate. Let's look at the next slide or the next page for a couple other examples here. So when we're looking at the residual plot, it's gonna magnify the deviations from the points of the line. It's gonna help you to see the typical uh, residual. We want the residual pot, plot to show no obvious pattern. We want the residuals to be relatively small in size and we, we want there to be the same amount above and below zero. Uh, and just a reminder that the mean of the residual plot is always gonna be zero. So here's an example of a linear model that is not appropriate. You can see y versus x here. You can see that it's pretty obviously curved. And if you fit a line to this data, the residual plot reveals this obvious curve that's left over. And so this is an example. This is one example of a linear model that is not appropriate for the data set. Let's look down here at these four scatter plots and residual plots and try and match them up. So the, the first one, the easiest one would be this scatter plot again looks curved. So we will have an obvious curve in the residual plot. And so of the four residual plots, it looks like B is the one that is definitely curved. So I can tell that scatter plot three is gonna be matched with <clears throat> the residual plot B. Uh, let's see here, this scatter plot is all tightly clustered around this line. So I wanna find the, the residual plot that has the smallest residuals. So looks like C is the least scattered uh, from zero. And so most likely four is gonna be matched with scatter plot or residual plot C. This residual plot is distinct and unique because it gets larger the residuals get larger and larger as you move further along the x value. So between these two graphs, you can see that the, the points are tightly clustered here, but as we progress down the line, they get further and further away. And so that's the pattern that you see in this residual plot. So D is gonna be matched with plot one. And then finally, that leaves scatter plot two to be with residual plot A. And just a quick note about these graphs. This pattern here in the residual plot is helping us to see that the linear model is not appropriate. And also this pattern here is not appropriate. Plot A and C, they're both evenly and randomly scattered and uh, the linear models appear to be appropriate. The only difference is these residuals tend to be smaller than these residuals here. So go ahead and try the independent practice problem uh, below. And I will say that there is a, um, the answer to this, to this problem here, since it's such a limited data set, it can be argued really two different ways. So make sure you take a look at what I said and see how it compares with your answer.